वेलकम वेलकम टू वाई फाई सिक्स ई लेसन फ्रॉम वाई फाई ट्रेनिंग माई नेम इज रसिक नायनजीत यू आर इंस्ट्रक्टर फॉर दिस पर्टिकुलर ट्रेनिंग सो वट वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस इन दिस ट्रेनिंग इज एक्चुअली सिक्स इगर्स डिप्लॉयमेंट वाई फाई एलेवन सर्टिफिकेशन प्रोग्राम कॉल वाई फाई सिक्स ई हैंस वी बेसिकली गिव द नेम फॉर दिस पर्टिकुलर ट्रेनिंग सो नाउ बिफोर गो टू द वाई फाई सिक्स ई लेट्स लुक एट हाई लेवल हाउ द टेक्नोलॉजी इवोल्व in the major enhancement point of view in wifi uh, development so now in 2009 we had the one uh, 11n amendment so that introduced uh, in 2.4 and 5 gigahertz spectrum um, and then next major en- enhancement was 11ac uh, came in 2013 so that supported in uh, 5 gigahertz band only that's a one difference uh, you need to be familiar with and then uh, the next enhancement came in 2021 so all this amendment like it is not a one year development it is taking a, a, a few number of years so now this uh, amendment was in the development since 2014 so at the time of that development only 2.5 gigahertz spectrum was available for wifi so that way uh, 11x initially being developed for those two frequency band so now the uh, deployment point of view Uh, another organization called Wi-Fi Alliance. They are basically developing a certification uh, interoperability. In that way, they develop a certification program called Wi-Fi Six, which is based on Eleven AX. So that uh, came in two thousand nineteen. Um, so at the time, basically Wi-Fi Alliance actually rebranded Eleven uh, AC and Eleven N certification program called Wi-Fi Five and Wi-Fi Four. So now uh, in 2020, a new spectrum being added to Wi-Fi, which is the 6 gigahertz spectrum. So that's a uh, large chunk of spectrum. You know, like uh, comparatively, uh, this is the biggest addition to Wi-Fi frequencies or uh, from the inception of Wi-Fi in 1999. So that way, 6 gigahertz was the major addition to the spectrum. So now, uh, whenever they added that spectrum. Only 11 AX being introduced to that particular spectrum. In that way, with 6 gigahertz, you don't have the uh, 11 N or 11 AC capability. So we call no backward compatibility. So now, because this new spectrum being added, so certification point of view, Wi-Fi Alliance came up with a new certification program called uh, Wi-Fi 6 E, which is the 11 AX deployment in 6 gigahertz. So that came in 2021. Um, So that's what we are going to discuss in this particular training. Uh, how Wi-Fi six being used in six gigahertz spectrum. So now, uh, uh, before moving to the six gigahertz, let's look at what's upcoming as well. In that way, you will get the better picture. You know, like uh, you already sometimes being heard that people talk about Wi-Fi seven, Wi-Fi seven. Um, but now the certification point of view it's a, a base on a amendment called 11 be uh, we call extremely high throughput eht uh, it's being developed so final ratification expected to late 2024 or 2025 uh, but industry point of view wifi alliance going to uh, develop a certification program called wifi 7 based on this uh, 11 be amendment in that way even though you will see the product in the market today called wifi 7 product there are no certification as of january 2024 uh, in that way they are pre standard product uh, but you need to be pay attention uh, when the certification comes and what are the products basically really get the wifi 7 certification uh, post uh, q1 2024 and that's one thing to be aware of 11b amendment and then the another one i triple e currently working on we call uh, 11bn so that working group recently being established uh, so around 2028 uh, certification or amendment uh, to be ratified so that's called uh, ultra high reliability uhr uh, again all these technologies will going to be supporting across the three band uh, 2.4 5 gigahertz and 6 gigahertz so that way now uh, that's going to be the basis for wifi 8 whenever it comes uh, so as of today if you look at We are in 2024 January kind of time frame. So now, if you think about in the bigger picture, so addition of the 6 gigahertz giving that all the 
uh, enhancement, you know, like leverages more frequencies available. In that way, if you better understand how 6 gigahertz Wi-Fi being used, so then you will have a more understanding how Wi-Fi 7 or 8 going to be benefiting and which features basically uh, really uh, adding value. So in our training, we will basically go and uh, talk about 6 gigahertz Wi-Fi, uh, but keep in mind uh, Wi-Fi 7 and 8, uh, or it is basically heavily using those spectrum uh, for added advantage. So now uh, in Wi-Fi 6E, it's look like all looks and nice, really good to go into, but there are certain sort of challenges you need to be high level aware of uh, before basically uh, deploying these. The first thing is basically you need to know uh, it is not universally available, the spectrum, you know, like uh, most of the countries, you know, like uh, in US, Canada, uh, South American countries, they allocated the entire 6 gigahertz spectrum for Wi-Fi. In that way, they have the uh, largest number of channels in the 6 gigahertz spectrum for Wi-Fi. But most of the other countries, US, except US, the Europe and Asia pack, Australia, New Zealand, we only have a first 500 meg. So regulatory is being only allocated those 500 meg spectrum. So that means we have a limited number of channel, typically 24 channel. So that way, uh, know the difference between those two. Uh, otherwise, you know, sometime you will uh, have challenges, you know, like deploying 80 megahertz deployment. Sometimes it is may available in US, but in Europe, we may not have that much of frequencies to go with the 60, uh, 80 megahertz kind of deployment. The other thing to be mindful about actually, these gigahertz spectrums are not freely available to use for Wi-Fi. Some of the existing incumbent deployments are there. For example, satellite services, fixed microwave services, uh, fixed mobile services, you know, like uh, they are using the gigahertz spectrum. In that way, when you deploy Wi-Fi, it has to be deployed in a way not interfered with incumbent services. In that way, the way we deploy six gigahertz have a different mode of operations, you know, like sometimes we call low power indoor so those ap can be only indoor deployment no external antennas can be mounted you know like uh, we are minimizing uh, impacting the outdoor kind of deployment of incumbent services that's called lpi and then second type of deployment called standard power uh, this is basically introducing how we can deploy uh, outdoor deployment uh, then we have some coordination required what we call afc automated frequency coordination uh, which is very important in the standard power deployment. But this deployment mode being ratified in US regulatory, not available in Europe and other part of the world. In that way, as of today, uh, it is again uh, one thing to be mindful, not universally available, the standard power deployment. And the third type called very low power. So this is available most of the regulatories, US and Europe as well as other countries which is gigahertz spectrum being allocated for Wi-Fi. So that way, this is uh, concept is you deploy very low power. So even you deploy the outdoor, that should not be interfered with the incumbent services. In that way, you don't want to have any coordination activities required before deploying this very low power mode. Uh, that's another sort of method available. So uh, the third thing to be remember about actually 6 gigahertz, we briefly mentioned it is not backward compatible. So all your uh, client has to be 11 AX supported uh, to operate in the 60 Hertz band. In a way it's good, but sometime now if you deploying 60 Hertz SSIDs in today, uh, sometime another thing to be mindful about the security. So we uplifted security, only supported WPA3 and enhanced open security standard. So that means you cannot deploy WPA2, WPA1, or even mixed mode security, or open authentication SSID cannot be configured. In that way, if you're deploying a, a security today, you have some uh, thing to be mindful about. Otherwise, it will be introducing some uh, compatibility challenges, how to support with current devices and security devices on the same SSID. So we'll talk about all this particular thing in this particular training. Um, so flow of the training, you know, like I just developed this training in a way you can understand simply high level overview in the first module, um, which we'll be talking about spectrum, uh, different countries, how we allocate in the spectrum, and then what are the trends, you know, like is the 6 gigahertz is going to be major uh, enhancement, you need to jump in immediately, or is that something slow picking? So we'll talk about general trend in 6 gigahertz world, 
and then i specifically talk about the lab setup i am using for this training um because i always wanted to take some packet captures configure some controllers in that way i am using a cisco 9800 controller or cisco meraki environment as well as i have a home netgear environment in that way i will using all the split three product uh, to basically give a cons- uh, some sort of a, a background how vendors being implementing sigurds in their particular vendor environment So now module two, we will talk about uh, 11ax overview. So Wi-Fi 6e is a 11ax implementation in a particular spectrum or 6 gigahertz band. So know the 6 gigahertz 11ax basic features will definitely help you to uh, pick up 6e concepts uh, easily. So in the module three, we will talk about what is specific to 6 gigahertz operations. You know, like there are certain concepts introduced, multiple BSSID features, short SSID features. and sometime we talk about lpi uh, standard power and very low power mode of operations and those kind of things will be discussed in the module number 3 so module number 4 we are going to discuss about how client devices discovering uh, 6 gigahertz aps so there are in band method out of band method being introduced so we will talk about all these different method and look at client types which supporting which method you know like uh, all these thing will be discussed in the module 4 So that way, module three and module four going to be heavy on the six e kind of concept. In that way, that's where the technical core of this particular training contain. And then we'll finish off the training with always the deployment consideration. That's the biggest sort of challenge we all, as a Wi-Fi professionals, need to know what are the challenges, what are the things we need to look at, how can you design six gigahertz. So those kind of concept I will talk about in the lesson number five or module number five uh, to finish off this particular training. So uh, before going to the content, and I would give this particular references what I have been used. You know, like a uh, uh, Wi-Fi 6E development point of view, I use the 11AX amendment, which is the IEEE amendment. Uh, talk about the underlying technology. So now uh, there's a good book here. I have uh, linked as a reference. You know, like uh, a Wi-Fi uh, 6 protocol and network. So sometime reading the standard maybe not the easiest thing you can do uh, but if you really want to read a book uh, to summarizing all these particular features with wifi 6 uh, this is a good book uh, there's one chapter on that particular book as well talking about 6 gigahertz so lastly i have listed some uh, wifi training uh, content uh, francois developed a certain content called wifi 6 lessons uh, and then he has developed a evaluation of wifi rates as well so you can refer those if you have access to the wifi training material uh, probably these are the two uh, training relevant to this content as well so now uh, wifi training as organization we develop content for uh, security uh, and wireless uh, focus areas you know like uh, we have developed a lot of uh, digital content as well as workbook series uh, so i have been developing uh, uh, Content for Wi-Fi training for quite number of years now. So this will be my eighth kind of uh, training development. So I have listed some of the my past development here. Uh, you can uh, go through those material if you have access to the training. So now uh, one more thing, actually, if you get access, probably the all access pass, which will allow to uh, allow you to get access to every training we are developing. In that way, if you have all access passes, so any training we develop, you have access. So otherwise you can individually purchase but it will be more economical to you to get the all access pass and get all the training content we are developing for you so a little bit of myself you know like uh, uh, i am a uh, senior instructor for wifi training uh, pretty much my industry experience focuses on cisco technologies uh, but i have uh, de- uh, developed content vendor neutral as well so that way um, i'm teaching cwnp training and sometime a kahu uh, site surveys kind of training uh, in the apac region so i based in melbourne australia uh, but my most of the time investment goes to cisco technologies in that way in this particular content as well i have been used mostly cisco enterprise product uh, but if you are working with a different vendor product but again we are not giving going heavily on the vendor specific thing but at least the uh, packet captures product deployment i have used in this training is Cisco, Cisco at least nine eight hundred, and the Cisco Meraki APs. You know, like uh, that's what I've been used. So, without further ado, let's go to the module number one. 